everyone welcome back to my channel and another tutorial today i am super happy to be showing you how to make the big john duffel by uh oh creations this bag does come in three different sizes this is the largest one um this is really fun to make actually before we get too much into the bag i want to explain my color choices here this bag is for my son riley um he plays Warhammer and he really needed a new duffel bag. The last duffel bag was that I made him finally wore out after three years. So he gave me the challenge of making this bag to match one of his armies. I don't know if you can see this. I don't know how to make it focus on there. Anyways, it's got like reds and brasses and chocolate browns. I'm like, this is a really different color combination, but we are gonna make it happen. And I think I managed to do that for him. So for my fabrics, to match that, I ended up choosing this uh, red vinyl. This is the Ketchup Chip Canuck Vinyl from Galaxy Customs. It is absolutely amazing to work with. So this is the Ketchup Chip color. The brown is of the dark brown Mora faux leather from Emmeline Bag. So it worked out really good. The, this bag is so big, it's so hard to show. Um, my webbing is from Blue Cala, as well as the zippers and the zipper pulls. I mean, this antique brass zipper tape from Blue Cala is just to die for. All of my other hardware is Emmeline bags. Um, interfacing for this bag, all of my cotton pieces are uh, fused with EB Fuse Light from Emmeline bags. Um, it is a squishy bag, as you can see. The main stabilizer is uh, fusible fleece. It's, I just use a Pellon fusible fleece. Um, let me show you some of the features of this bag. Now, the lining fabric is a Fabricville fabric. Um, and of course, my son, as it's gaming and with Warhammer, uh, dice is very important. So I chose to have a dice lining for that. This has one zipper pocket on this side. Now this pattern um, comes with many, many options you can do for pockets. You could put mesh pockets on either side. You can put in slip pockets. There is also an add-on for this pattern um, for different pockets you can add. I did add on some of those pockets and I will show you. I will also put that link down below where you can get that add-on. You do need to have the uh, pattern in order to put those pockets on but it's a free add-on in a blog post and I will make sure I connect that down below as well as linking where you can get this pattern okay so this is one of I'm trying so hard to show this this is one of the add-on pocket things so we have a slip pocket on this side and then it's got a zipper pocket here and then another add-on <laughs> were these side slip pockets I got one on each side, um, and that was all I did for extra pockets on this. Uh, what else, what else, what else? Oh, for these side pockets, now I did them a little bit different than in the pattern. I, I ended up binding them. You do not need to bind them. What happened was I did it the way the pattern said, but because I chose to do this in all vinyls, my layers were really thick. And in order to close up the turning hole, I would have had to hand sew it. And there's just no way I had the hand strength to be able to get through all that. Um, you can make this bag in cottons. You can make this bag in canvases. Um, you can make it in full leathers like I did. So in the tutorial, I do show you how to do uh, these side pockets the way it was in the powder and then I also show you how to go ahead and bind them if you want to do them like I did. Uh, the only other difference I did was on the bottom so say this was a lining right here I left an opening here for turning in the pattern it calls for turning through the pocket but again because of my vinyl I was really worried that it would be hard to turn through so I left an opening in that seam there and then I closed that up through the opening in the pocket I show you how I do all of that in the video. What else, what else? Thank you, Tara, for allowing me to do tutorial on this amazing pattern. Um, I'm just in love with this duffel bag. So without further ado, how about we get to making this, uh, this bag and then I'll catch you on the other side. Okay, so you're gonna need number five zipper tape, some optional rivets, some Velcro, webbing, two swivel clasps, a slider, two triangle rings or D rings. I am going to put uh, strap ends on my crossbody strap and for my pocket option I need six number five zipper pulls and of course your nameplate or handmade tag. Okay. 
Okay, the many pieces of this bag. So you need two exterior sides backed with fleece. I cut out two too many of these side panels. You only need six, not the eight that I showed here. And those are backed with the woven interfacing. Your bottom panel, the exterior backed with fleece. And then your lining piece backed with your medium woven interfacing. Your side gusset pieces. So you need four exterior pieces backed with the fleece and then your four lining pieces. Again, all of my cotton pieces are backed with EB Fuse Light. You're going to need your two uh, zipper pocket linings. Your two bottom end pieces backed, the exterior is backed with fleece and then your two lining pieces. Your two main panels backed with fleece and then the two lining pieces. This is for my front accent pocket. You do not need to put this one with fleece. It's just the vinyl alone. And of course the lining. My two side pockets, I'm doing them all in vinyl. You could do two in vinyl and two in your lining fabric if you like. Your two side pieces here. Your strap slider pieces. These are all for our padded uh, strap. You're, you're going to need uh, zipper tabs, two exterior, two linings. Your handle grips, two pieces. This is for your slider. All for your grips. And here's your strap slider, another piece. Okay, so we're going to take our uh, strap slider holder and we're going to mar mark a middle line. I believe it was two and a half inches. I am going to use double-sided double tape to fold the short ends into that center line. I'm going to make sure this measures two and a half inches square. So I'm going to do an eighth of an inch and a quarter of an inch top stitch on both of these on the folded edge like so. Okay, now we're going to take the center piece. We're going to measure up one inch for both of the short ends, ends, mark it on the right side. And that is going to be the placement of the what we just top stitched. So you're going to put the folded edges right along that line, hold it in place with clips. Then you're going to go ahead and base those in place. Now we're going to take the strap slider sides and we are going to line them up with each of the long ends of this piece here. Okay, we're going to go ahead with a 3 eighths of an inch and then top stitch that in place. So that is done. So now you're going to take the uh, strap slider main and I'm going to leave a small opening here for turning. Put them right sides together. And then we are going to sew from each of those lines all the way around, leaving that opening in the middle. Okay, so that is done. So I'm going to go ahead and trim those seam allowances with my pinking shears, but I'm not going to trim the seam allowances right around where um, the opening is, but everywhere else. And then go ahead and turn that through the opening. Go ahead and push out all of your seams nice and crisp. Uh, use a chopstick or some sort of turning tool or a pen to go ahead and poke all of those seams out nice and flush. So what we're doing here is we're making the padded strap for our crossbody strap. Okay, if this was cotton, you could go ahead and press that. Now I use this as kind of a template to figure out uh, how to cut my sizes of foam. So we're going to take two pieces of foam cut to about the same size and stuff it into the middle. Make sure it's lying nice and flat inside there. Once you have that, you're going to turn in the, the raw edges 
and then you're going to go ahead and top stitch all the way around this piece with an eighth of an inch seam allowance which is going to close up that opening as well. I'm also going to go around with a quarter of an inch to make a little bit more decorative stitching. So you've got two lines of top stitching. Now I'm going to take my seatbelt webbing and I'm just going to melt the ends so they don't fray. And we are going to prepare our crossbody strap. So I'm going to take my swivel, or my slider, sorry. I put my webbing through and because I want to put my ends on here, my webbing isn't quite thick enough so I'm going to fold it in half here. Use a little bit of double sided tape and I'm going to fold it upon itself and then put my slider on top of it. Another thing you could do if you didn't want to put a, a strap end on it like I am doing is you can fold the end in like this and then fold it again and then sew a box with a cross in it to hold it in place. I'm not going to sew the cross. I am actually going to just fold it over like so and I'm going to put two rivets in to hold it in place. Okay, so I have done that. So now you want to lay your strap so it is wrong side up. Follow it all the way down to the other end. Grab your swivel clasp and put it so it's wrong side facing up and bring the strap wrong sides together. Feed it up through the slider and down through the other side of the slider like so. So now we have it right side up and then you're going to take your padded um, strap holder here and you are going to feed the webbing through what we just made here. Like so. And then we are going to take our other swivel clasp and put it on right side up and then finish your end like you did on the other side there. Again, you could do a uh, square with an X in there. I'm going to put my strap end on and then secure it with rivets. Okay, so now we're gonna work on our handles here. So we are going to measure in approximately seven eighths of an inch-ish from two of the ends and five eighths of an inch in from the other one of the other ends and this is going to be the placement for our two velcro strips we want it to be nice and centered so then i'm going to take some double-sided tape on the the back side of these just to hold them in place while i take them to the sewing machine and sew So use those lines as your guide to where to put these. Then I'm going to take them to the sewing machine and I am going to sew around the perimeter of these with approximately an eighth of an inch seam allowance to secure them in place. that we find a center mark here. So I'm taking the one that has the soft bristles, not the not the hard bristles, but the, the soft bristles of the uh, of the um, Velcro. And right in the center here, I am drawing about a two inch line and I am going to make a cut here. And this is our turning hole because we're gonna put these right sides together and sew all the way around.
Okay, so now you want to take these and you want the Velcro to be opposite from one another like so. So one on one side, one on the other, put them right sides together. And then you're going to sew around these with a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so that's done. So I'm going to take my pinking shears just to make it so we get nice rounded corners the best we can and to reduce some of that bulk. And then through that turning hole, you can go ahead and turn this right side out. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and top stitch this with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now you're going to take one of your handle pieces and find the center mark. So I'm just folding it in half and marking it with chalk. And then we're going to want to place this as centered as we possibly can over top of that um, I'm just double checking that I'm center here. Um, over top of that turning hole that we made in the, this uh, handle. So I'm gonna use a little bit of double-sided tape down the middle just to hold this in place. In my double-sided tape I do get from Galaxy Customs. Okay, so I'm going to find the approximate center here and just draw some lines as a guide where I'm going to place my uh, webbing here. So once you have that, place it nice and center over that turn hole. Make sure you're centered, adjust if needed. Okay, and then we're just going to go sewing down here, 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 and here to secure that in place. So you can see that is done and our handle is good to go. Okay, so now we are going to prep our sides. So I'm going to fold these in half and clip my centers of my exterior side pieces. Double check that it's nice and centered. And we are going to work on placing our crossbody strap connectors. So I'm just drawing myself a center line and then uh, from that center line, three quarter of an inch from that center line up. And that's going to give me one and a half inches and going to give me a really nice uh, guide to where I'm going to place my connector. Now you're going to notice my connector is a little bit short. I didn't have quite enough. Um, Webbing, I did not order enough, so my connectors are just slightly shorter than what the pattern calls for. I'm gonna use a little bit of double-sided tape below that two inch line that I marked from one short end. I'm gonna take my triangular ring, bring it down to that two inch line that I just marked and secure the end into that double-sided tape. And then I'm gonna go and stick this connector using those lines I just drew as a guide like so. And then from the folded line where the connector is, I am going to make a one inch line as a guide for my stitching. And then I'm gonna sew up here, across here, and down the other side, and then add two rivets 
or you can go ahead and do a rectangle, a rectangle with a cross in the middle to secure. Okay, so now we are going to add the extra pocket. So this is the blog post. I will put the link to where you can get this down in the description below. So I've secured with rivets. I've backed the rivets with the small scraps of Decaville Heavy. Now I'm going to take my two side slip pockets, put them right sides together. And then stitch across here with a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance for both pieces. Now that that's done, I'm going to fold these wrong sides together. Because I can't press this because I am using vinyl, I am going to use double-sided tape as my basting uh, tool here. Again, only use double-sided tape if your machine can handle it. I am on, on industrials and I have absolutely no problems using double-sided tape. Otherwise, press them, finger press them, and secure them with clips. Once we have these wrong sides together, we're going to go ahead and top stitch this, the folded line with a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so that is done. So now what we're going to do is we want to center this on our side panel here. Now you may notice that the slip pocket seems a little bit wider than the panel. That is okay. This is going to give it a little bit of a billow in the middle so we can actually put stuff in the slip pocket. So just line up those raw edges and clip them in place. You can see how it has a little bit of a billow in the center and that's exactly what we want. Okay, and then go ahead and baste that in place with the 1 8 of an inch seam allowance and do the same with the other side. So there we go, we got those two slip pocket add-ons done. You can set those aside for now. Now we are going to go back to the add-on and we are going to do this pocket add-on here and it's for the front of the bag. Okay, so excuse this, I accidentally did it on the wrong side, so this is my second time filming this, doing it correctly. So what you want to do is off of the height of the bag, you want to cut off an eighth of an inch from the lining, or sorry, a quarter of an inch from the lining. So I am again using a double-sided tape here. If you can't use double-sided tape, you can use clips, no problem. So on the short end of this front pocket lining, we are going to put some double-sided tape or clips. I'm going to take my zipper tape and put it right sides up so both our lining piece and our zipper tape are right side up. Now I'm going to take my exterior pocket piece and I am going to stick it right sides together with that zipper tape. So our lining and our exterior are right sides together sandwiching that zipper tape. Then I'm going to go ahead and put my zipper foot on my machine and I am going to sew across there with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Then I'm going to fold it over and like this, put it wrong sides together and top stitch it. So this is what we get. Okay, so I'm going to take some double sided tape on the other short side of this exterior pocket piece. 
and I am going to fold it up right sides together upon itself and adhere this to the other side of the zipper tape. Again, use clips if your machine cannot handle the double sided tape. And then we're going to do the same with the lining side and bring it right sides together and attach it to the opposite side of the zipper tape. Okay, and we're going to take this and do it with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so now we have to turn this right side out. So you're kind of going to reach in through this loop and pull it through. And you're going to see my zipper kind of went all wacky. I ended up just taking off the pull. It ended up being a lot easier to top stitch this without the pull on. So uh, go ahead, take the pull off at this point and we can reattach it later. So once you bring the linings right sides together, you'll see here if you take your pull off and you go ahead and you top stitch along here, you won't have to worry about top stitching in a loop. You can just do it flat. So yeah, you're going to go ahead, make sure the other side is out of the way and top stitch. Okay, so here's my pull off. I am going to use my handy dandy fork, which I use to put my zipper pulls on my zipper tape and reattach the zipper pull to the zipper. There we go. Okay, so I'm just going to take a wonder clip here and just kind of clip it onto the open end of the zipper just to make sure my pull is not going to fly off. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to kind of fold the zipper up in a way. From where the top of our zipper is, we want to measure up one inch. And make a mark. So make sure it's nice and straight. And then what we're going to do is we are going to fold this along that one inch mark we just did and then secure everything in place making sure your lining is nice and flat and lining flush with the exterior pieces. Okay, so now I'm gonna go along the top here and I'm gonna do an eighth of an inch top stitch and then I'm gonna go ahead and do a quarter of an inch top stitch and baste the sides together. So that is done. Now we're going to take our main lining piece here and we are going to find our centers of the top and the bottom sides. And we are going to measure up one inch from the bottom. First, I'm making sure that I am indeed center here. We want this to be very accurate, especially when it comes to when we're going to be putting on our handles. You want them to be as center as possible. Okay, so I'm going to put a little bit of double sided tape just along the bottom again. Only use the double sided tape if your machine can sew through it, otherwise you'll just have to hold this in place or you can use pins if you are using uh, cotton fabric. So we're going to measure one inch up from the bottom and make a line. And that is going to be the placement of the bottom of the zipper pocket. So I am measuring in about three inches I believe it was to have this nice and centered.
And this should fit perfect right in the middle of my marking lines here. Okay, and then I'm going to take this to the machine and sew down here, top stitch here, and up the side again. Okay, now in from the sides, I'm going to make a two and a half inch line, and this is going to be the placement for our handles. And I'm also going to measure down two inches from the top because that is where we are going to stop sewing them. So I'm going to take a little bit of double sided tape on the back side of my seatbelt webbing. And you won't sew through this, so you can definitely do this with the domestic machine if you want to stick it down with the tape. You want to make sure the tape falls below that two inch line though. Okay, so I'm using the one that doesn't have the handle on it, so this is just the strap itself. And then I'm going to take the webbing and line the outside part right up against that line that we just drew. Stick it down. Make sure your webbing is not twisted. You want to make sure it's all going the right way. Bring it around to the other side and the same thing so the outside of the webbing is right along that line. Then I'm going to transfer these chalk lines here and that is going to be where I am going to sew across. So we're going to go up here, across here, down, and then we're also going to do X's to help secure it as, long, as well as rivets. So as you can see, I am done here. We have a functioning zipper pocket, a functioning slip pocket, and I have my X's and my rivets holding everything in place. And you can go ahead and do the exact same thing with the opposite side. I didn't put the pocket on the opposite side, but the strap placement is the same. Okay, so now we are going to work on our side zipper pocket gussets. So similar to how we did the zipper pockets, we are going to do the same thing. I have my lining right side up. I am using tape. Again, you can use clips here. I am going to take my zipper tape also right side up and put it on top of the lining. And then for the exterior piece, we're going to go ahead and do the exact same thing. Put some double sided tape along one long side and put it right sides together with the zipper tape and the lining piece. You want to make sure the lining piece and the exterior pieces are the same length and they're lined up perfectly. I can see here my zipper tape is a little bit too long, so I will just trim that up. And then we're going to take this to the machine with our zipper foot and sew it with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and do the same with the other gusset piece. want to top stitch these so you can go ahead and put use an iron if you're using cottons or finger press uh, these if you're using vinyls again I am going to use double-sided tape as my base just because I can as you all know I love my double-sided tape all right so I am going to push my exterior piece away from the zipper as nice and taut as I possibly can And then I'm going to do the same with the lining piece, bringing the exterior and the lining pieces wrong sides together. And then once that's done, we're going to go ahead and top stitch underneath the zipper and then baste the other three sides together and then do the exact same thing with the other piece.
so this is what it looks like when those are done so we're going to go ahead and do the exact same thing again but with the other side of the zipper tape and our other gusset pieces okay so we're working with one gusset here i've already gone ahead and done one and this is what we i'm going to show you how we're going to do right now Okay, so you have your finished gusset piece. You're going to take your um, end bottom pieces, your exterior piece, and your lining piece. Now these should be the exact same width as our gusset if we had our seam allowances right, and mine are. So you're going to put the exterior pieces right sides together and the lining pieces right sides together. So these are going to sandwich that zipper panel we just did. You're going to go ahead and do that with a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. I like to go back and forth over the zipper teeth just to give it a little extra security. And then we're going to place, uh, push the exterior panel and the lining wrong sides together and then top stitch along that seam through the bottom panel. Okay, now the other side is a little trickier. So again, you wanna bring your exterior pieces right size together, and you're gonna to have to kind of squish in the middle here to bring your lining pieces right size together. And we're gonna go ahead and sew that with a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance as well. So you kind of have this loop-de-loopy -loop thing happening in the center here. Okay, so once again, we're going to want to pull the lining in the exterior pieces wrong sides together and top stitch through the bottom panel. So you're going to see this is going to create a big loop. So just make sure you're not twisted. Make sure everything comes around the way it's supposed to before sewing this in place. Okay, so I have them wrong sides together and I'm making sure I'm not twisted and you can see my loop is going to be perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and top stitch that one in place. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and just baste the exterior and the lining places together so they all act as one peace. So now we are going to have to attach this to our exterior side panel. So we want to find the quarter marks on both of our gussets and on our side piece. So for our gussets, I am lining up the bottom ends here, right where that seam is, pulling it taut, and I'm just going to do a small clip here that's going to mark my center bottom. Do the same and pull it all the way nice and taut to the zipper panel. 
and that'll be my center top. And then our center top and our center bottom, we are going to bring together. And that is going to give us our side quarter sections here. You'll want to do the same with the other side of this gusset piece. Okay, and now we want to find the quarter sections of our side panels. So we already have the top and the bottoms marked and on our pattern piece, we have that side quarter section done. So just mark it with chalk. So then we're going to place these right sides together. Undo the zipper, it will help a lot. And we're gonna mark or match up the bottom centers and then the top centers. And then the two side quarter sections. And then what we're going to do is go ahead and evenly distribute the fabric the rest of the way around, clipping it all in place. Now when you get to these bottom quarters, you're going to see that it might not look like it fits around. So we're going to just do some very tiny, maybe quarter of an inch snips just to help ease that fabric around that corner. This is making a straight piece turn into more of a rounded piece. And secure with clips. Continue this all the way around this panel. And we're going to go ahead and we are going to sew this together with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. The way I'm holding this on my cylinder arm, this is how I would place it on the bed of my flatbed machine as well. So that is all done. Now we're going to go ahead. Um, now, if you're following the pattern, this is the way you will do it. You will take your one of your side lining pieces and you're going to put it uh, right size together with the lining side of this. And you are going to leave about a four inch opening here for turning. So what you're going to do is the gusset part that isn't attached to anything, you're going to kind of squish onto the inside and clip all of those other ends around and follow that seam, same seam that we just sewn all the way around. And then once that's done, you would turn it through the hole and hand sew the hole shut. Um, due to my uh, vinyl layers, I cannot, I do not have the hand strength to hand sew this. So I am actually going to change it up a little bit and I'm going to do this as a binding finish. So yeah, so if you, if you can go ahead and do it this way, but I am doing my, um, my binding finish. Okay, so to do this as a binding finish, I just have my already made binding. 
I'm going to take my side exterior side panel and my lining side panel and I'm going to put them wrong sides together and go ahead and base them in place all the way around. And then when I have that, um, you're going to attach the gusset the exact same way we did with the other one. And then you go ahead and bind. I have, I'm not going to show that here. I have a binding class down in the description below if you want to learn how to do it this way. So when you go to do the other side, make sure that your zippers are going the opposite way. And the reason we want to do that is when they're on either side of the bag, we want our zipper pulls to be on the same side. So make sure you do them opposite. Okay, so now we're going to take another lining piece. We're going to put it right sides together with the lining side of our side zippers here. And on that unattached side of the gusset, we are going to clip it all in place. Just like so, I would take this to my flatbed if I was using my flatbed and go all the way around here with a three eighths or a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I am using my cylinder arm just because I find I have a little bit more control. So I am doing this opposite than what I would be doing on my flatbed. If I was on my flatbed, I would have been doing it from the inside of the bag, but on my cylinder arm, I can do it this way. Okay, so now we are going to prep our top zipper. So you're going to take your zipper tabs, you're going to take the exterior and put it right sides together with the zipper tape and take your lining and put it um, right side up as well. Once you've gone ahead and secured that in place, you are going to just trim them up. Okay, so I went ahead and I did my zipper pocket. Uh, that class is down below if you need to learn how to do that. So very similar to how we did the other zipper panels. We are taking our lining piece right side up. Again, use clips if you can't use tape. And we're gonna take our zipper panel right side up and attach it to the lining. And then we are going to take our back exterior piece and do the same thing. But we are going to put it right sides together with the zipper tape. Make sure your straps are out of the way. You do not want to accidentally sew through them. Okay, so from each of the ends before we sew, we want to mark in a one half of an inch line. And we are only going to sew in between these half inch lines. And what this is going to do is leave a little bit of a gap so when we go to attach our side panels, we have room to sew. 
So go ahead and sew that with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance in between those half inch marks. And just like before, we want to push our two panels wrong sides together, nice and taut away from the zipper tape. Now I'm only putting my tape in between those half inch marks because we are only going to top stitch between those half inch marks as well. We do not want to have any tape stuck in there. We want to be able to freely access those unsewn parts. Okay, and then I'm just going to mark on the right side here, the half inch in, so I know not to top stitch past those half inch marks. And then top stitch half inch mark to half inch mark. And then you're going to go ahead and do the exact same thing with the other side of the zipper tape and the other main lining and exterior panels. Okay, so this is what it looks like when that is all done. So now what we want to do is flop everything over to one side except for the um, front lining panel. So we just have the front lining panel here. We're taking the bottom lining panel and we are clipping this in place. So what I'm doing here that's different than the pattern is I'm leaving an opening on this side here for turning later on. So you can see here, I went ahead and I sewed in between those lines and leaving that opening. And now I'm matching up the other side and I am going to sew all the way across this with a half inch seam allowance. Okay, so you can see our lining, we have it all looped done. We have our opening on this side and the other side is attached. Now I want to find my quarter sections here, so I am lining where my bottom pieces and my main pieces match up to find my bottom center and doing a small clip on both sides. And we know the top section center is right where our zipper panel meets, so kind of in the center of our zipper tabs. So I'm going to take my bottom center and kind of match it to the center of that zipper tab to find my side quarter sections. This is to put on our side panels. So this bag goes together actually very similar to a simple zipper pouch. It's just got a lot more things going on, but it's a very similar process. Okay, so we're gonna take our side um, lining panel, find our quarter sections on this as well, just as we did with the other panels. You can also use the pattern piece to mark these. Okay, so we're going to take our lining parts right sides together and we're going to match up those quarter sections. 
We are not doing anything with our exterior pieces right now. We are only working on the lining. So now when we get to the top of the lining here, we actually do not want to clip the um, exterior zipper tabs there. We're only going to go and sew through the lining panels. You're going to be pulling that out of the way. So you're going to go ahead and do this with a half inch seam allowance. And this is just to make our uh, lining a little bit smaller than the exterior. So our bag isn't, our lining isn't too baggy on the inside. So go all the way around with a half inch seam allowance. Now here when you get to the top where the uh, zipper panel is where our exterior and our lining meet, this is where you want to make sure you're folding the exterior part back at that zipper tab and only sewing through the lining pieces. Just like so. That is why we left that little half inch mark in our top stitching. And then go ahead and do the exact same thing with the other side. Okay, so we have our lining all complete here. So now we are just going to double check. You can see I have my opening in the bottom here. Now we're going to fold the exterior right sides together. And we are going to do the same thing with our bottom panel, except for we are not leaving an opening in the bottom. And we are now going to use a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance back to our original seam allowance. Okay, and then we're also going to fold this open and we will top stitch along the bottom here like so. Now the other side is a little trickier, especially when it comes to the top stitching. So again, you're going to do this the same way and clip the other main exterior to the other side of the exterior bottom panel. But when it comes to top stitching it, we are going to end up doing this in a tube. I will show you how we do this though. Okay, so now you can see how we have a tube here and we need to top stitch along that bottom panel to put that seam in place. So I just kind of have working from the inside of the bag through the tube. It's a little bit awkward. Take your time to do it, but it really isn't hard to do. It's just a little bit, uh, just take your time. <laughs> it just is a little bit of a uh, finagling uh, the bag through like we are doing here.
Okay, so now this is what we got. So now we are going to attach our sides the same way we did with the lining sides. Now you wanna make sure that you have your zipper pulls going the direction you want to go. I still managed to put mine on backwards. I wanted them to be at the front, but I didn't realize I had my zipper pulls open. So my zipper pulls actually go to the back of the bag. So yeah, just, just kind of make sure you situate them where you wanna go. Again, you're marking your quarter sections. On this, you'll have your quarter sections already marked on your side pockets because that's all done. And you're going to do these exactly like you did with the lining pieces, but with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Now the only difference here is we were only, when we did the lining, we didn't want to sew through all the layers right where that zipper tab was. For this one, um, you can sew through um, both the lining layer and the exterior layer right at the top of that zipper tab. And what that's going to do is make it so our lining and our exterior kind of sit nice together so our lining doesn't flop down into the center of the bag right at that top part there. So right here. So yes, we're going to kind of clip those together. So they go together and you won't be going inside of the, um, you're going to, because our seam allowance for exterior is an eighth of an inch shorter, um, it's just going to kind of be a tack stitch there as we go through. So you'll have your ha half inch seam that was for our lining, but we're only doing three eighths on the exterior. So it's going to just tack it right there on the lining piece, right where our uh, zipper tab was. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> Okay, now right here, that's right where the lining zipper tab is, and this is where we are going to catch it within the, within the lining seam allowance at the 3 eighths of an inch. And again, this is just gonna make it so our lining doesn't fall inside of the bag at the uh, top zipper closure. So it's only that very top zipper panel part that we are catching in the stitching of the lining. and you will do the other end the exact same way. Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of pull this through the open end just to double check that my seam is all good. Just as a visual, you don't have to do this. I just like to make sure I caught everything before I put on that other end. And we are looking good. And go ahead and trim this seam allowance down a little bit to reduce some bulk and do the same with the other side. So here you can see how we 
tacked it on there. Now what we want to do is make it so our lining doesn't sag, like I pop out when we're pulling our stuff out of the bag. So you're going to take the lining bottom side of the side and the exterior bottom of the side and we are just going to clip about a four inch mark right along the bottom of those side pieces. So you're kind of squishing the bags together and just bringing in those seams. And then within the seam allowance, we're just going to tack them together for about four inches. So this is at the very bottom side of both. So you've kind of squished the exterior and the lining side bottoms together. And again, these tack stitches are going to be just within that seam allowance there. So let me show you the other side how I was doing that. So here's our exterior. We're kind of pushing it in and bringing down the lining exterior side bottom piece, matching up our centers and then tacking down just that four inches. And what that's gonna do is gonna make it so when you pull your stuff out of your bag, the lining doesn't come with it. They are going to be sewn into the bottom there. So you can see, that's what I've done there within the seam allowances. And now through the opening of the bag, we're going to start turning it. If you've done it like the pattern, you will be turning it through the pocket. But again, I was worried because I used vinyl that I would not be able to turn it through the pocket. So I opted to leave an opening in the lining, which I can sew up through the pocket later. Okay, so now once everything looks good, we are going to open up our zipper pocket, pull out our zipper lining that has the opening in the bottom, reach in through there and grab the opening in the lining like this and pull it through that pocket. And then you're going to clip the opening shut and then we are going to go ahead and sew along here with a half inch seam allowance to close up that hole. Then once we have that done, we stuff this back in through that opening in the zipper pocket and then we just have to top stitch our zipper pocket shut on the bottom, stuff it back in and then our bag is done. All right, that's it, that's all. As you can see, um, it had a lot of pieces. The main work for this was actually the prep work, but definitely worth it for the outcome of this bag. So I really hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe. And if you would like to support my channel further, you can go ahead and buy me a coffee. Uh, I'll put that link down below if you decide you want to do that. Any of the donations that go to the coffee account go towards equipment to make my tutorials better. We are currently saving for some more lighting to make things a little bit brighter down here in my basement studio. Anyways, thank you everybody for tuning in. Again, I hope that you found this tutorial uh, helpful and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye!